Jamie Trier, TrierWilderness.com. Welcome. Um, for those of you that are new to our channel, um, my family and I live 100% off grid in northern Idaho. We are prepping our house for sale. We are going to pass on the torch and uh, allow another family to take over our very active working homestead. Good morning, Miss Jill. We are listing our house tomorrow, and I just think it's kind of funny. It's hard to fathom that it's going to look ready for listing when you see behind me and see the bomb that's gone off here. We kind of keep redirecting our efforts. Uh, we have to work with the sun, we have to work with the weather, so we've been outside tidying and cleaning the property, which now looks like a beautiful park. I will show you, we're gonna go out there. But um, we're ready. We've had some interesting um, events occur over the last couple days, which I will also share. But um, this is all stuff that has already either been packed up and shoved in corners or has now been sorted and packed and ready to be put out there. I like to put things in Rubbermaid totes, especially when you don't know um, exactly where you're heading and what the circumstances might be. When we lived in the tent, um, Rubbermaid totes and plastic totes like this were ideal to keep pests out of our food and out of our clothing. Um, it just keeps things safe. So. Um, I was blessed to go through the shed and empty out, gosh, I cleaned them yesterday, probably 20, 20 totes that I had emptied in there and donated things, shared things, gifted things. So now I have empty totes to work with and truthfully, we really don't have a whole lot left in the house. I have to go through some things in the Mountain Boys old bedroom. Um, and most of that, I believe, is going to get gifted. So good morning, Chad. Good morning, Shelly. I am so glad you guys are joining me. So we're going to venture out, and I'll show you what we've been doing out there. And before I do that, if you could just bear with me, I would like for you guys to share with me, for one, what you're drinking today, because there is an actual reason behind asking that, and also um, celebrations of any kind or prayer requests while I do this because I want to share um, the link to this video with someone and that way you guys can be interactive while I have my head down here working on this. So give me a second here and you guys share with me and I hope you guys are all doing well. There we go and let me do that one. Okay, so that has been done. Good morning, Tammy. I am drinking a protein drink with a little bit of um, organic peanut butter, cashew milk, and I've got about five cups on the table. You'll see when I come back up um, to make sure I'm drinking enough. I'm going to spin this around. I just want to show you this. This is one thing that's going to change in here today, and then the additional trim work is going to get done as well. But I am going to be staining the railings a dark stain, and I believe that's going to really make all the, the dark in the wood to pop. So that's on my agenda today, as well as sorting and getting things out to the shed. And the mountain man will be busy in here as well, um, but right now he's busy outside. So I'm going to spin this. Actually, I'm just going to leave it the way it is because we're heading out. So down we go. Yes, you can come with me. Come on, dogs. Shelly is drinking a smoothie and water. Good deal. Do you have veggies in your smoothie as well, Shelly? Okay. Close these doors. Look how nice it looks. Mountain boy. Give me a squeeze, boy, before you get to work. That's one of our helping hands. Thank you. All right. I am live and I'm off and running here. So there's my nice little comfort spot and where I do my devotions in the morning on the swing over here. But it just, I mean, you saw last week, the grass was knee deep. Um, mower, we mowed last week. We started on Thursday and I was, I mowed a very big sack. Hopefully it's switching. There we go. Okay. All right. So, hopefully I don't lose you guys. It's switching between um, routers, so hopefully it's cooperating. But 
you can see that it just looks wonderful. My wash line is in use. The yard just looks amazing. And guys, when we first got here, this was all overgrown wilderness like that. So the mountain man has worked hard over these last nine years to really groom this and make it look nice. So just proud of him. But we were mowing Thursday. He's out there mowing now. We just have a little bit more. It's actually weed whacking left to do. And, and then he's done. Then he'll be moving his efforts inside. But we were, there's always, there's always something guys. And, um, Today we will talk about a lot of these things, but there's always something. And, and you know, we were mowing, I, I, was, I was mowing, I relinquished that and went to make supper. He started mowing and it froze up. It wouldn't, it wouldn't move. And at that point in the day, it was late. I mean, it was 7.30. So instead of, you know, fixing it or looking at it, he just said, you know what? Tomorrow's another day, which I was grateful for. He needs to slow down and we'll talk about that too. Copper, you staying out? All right, sorry. Welcome to my world, right? So, yes, Diana, we have three pro <laughs> Um, Those last us a very long time. Come on, Bowser. But when we first got here, we didn't know what we would need and how much we would utilize and how often we'd be able to get propane back. So, yes, and he also has a propane forge. Um, but... This was Thursday, Friday, it rained all day. And oh, I gotta show you this. I told you I have beverages and beverages and beverages and beverages. I'm drinking. I have to do that because I get too tied up in my stuff and I don't drink. Um, Saturday comes along and he starts working on the scaffolding in the house doing trim work. And suddenly I hear him breathing weird. And I'm in the other room. It's just we're really in tune with each other. I'm like, are you all right? He's like, no, I'm feeling weird. I said, well, you're holding your breath. And he said, I'm not holding my breath. I can't catch my breath. So, hour later, we ended up in the ER. Um, he had real extreme tightness in his chest, some pain. Um, he was having problems breathing. And then all of a sudden, a really rough cough came on. And... When Austin was three days old, I ended up with an a, a adrenaline shot um, because of a reaction to an allergy shot. And the same thing had happened to me, um, that I was um, coughing so badly. But coughing can also be a sign of a heart attack. So thankfully, there were people back here. Um, one of our friends went and opened the gate. Thank you, Zach. And another friend of ours, Evan, thank you, um, took us to the ER because our truck started giving us trouble in the front end last week. So it was all a blessing and it was not a heart attack. It was a result of dehydration and a lot of stress. And as you can see, I can't stop him. He's unstoppable. Um, he did rest uh, the rest of Saturday. He slept the whole day afternoon Saturday, which was a blessing because that's something that's difficult for him. And um, we chilled greatly on Friday and a little bit on Monday. Um, but there's always stuff. And we need to remember to take care of ourselves. I've been preaching that for three years. And over these last three weeks, we got to a point where we really weren't taking good care of ourselves anymore. And I have friends out there today who are busting and doing the same thing. And we have, sometimes we have to. We have to work a little extra hard at times to make things happen and to get things done. But we need to remember that those things aren't as valuable as our health. And we will be celebrating greatly on Friday because this house will be listed on Thursday. And our big panic and our big rush will slow down. We've gotten it to a point where it really looks nice. Despite all these totes, it will take half an hour to get them out of here. I can sweep, I can mop, I can make things look pretty, and we'll be good to go. But through the rush of these things, you know, 
there's lessons to be learned. Let's just go there. Now, I saw there were some other messages on here, and I want to check that quick. Oh, cool. Oh, nice. I asked Shelly what she had in her smoothie, and it has carrots, celery, kale, beets, ginger, cinnamon, blueberries, avocado, and green tea with flax and hemp hearts. That right there is a cup of health. That is so awesome. What a good, excuse me, what a good mixture. What a good mixture. All right. Oh, hello, Craig. Welcome, welcome. And tell Justin, I will tell them that, Charles. Um, I didn't. I didn't know if it was okay to say something, Charles, so you can let me know on that. I wasn't going to broach that today, but we can. Good morning, Miss Rachel. All right, and we've got all of you guys joining. I'm so excited. Okay, so the thing is, we get stuck in our circumstances, and our circumstances are can be really grim, um, they can come on quick, that all is going well, and then suddenly, you know, everything falls apart. Or you could be on this progressive journey like we have where it's an ongoing thing and you've got to work your way through it. But the key thing to that always is going to be keeping your eyes on the good Lord and trusting, trusting the outcome, trusting what you're experiencing and not getting caught up and focusing on your circumstances. If we would have focused solely on our circumstances this entire time, I don't think we'd be here to tell the story. So, I want to encourage you guys, when you're in these places, it's no different than your health. Um, when you have an ailment or you have pain, if you focus on that pain, there's a good chance that that pain's gonna get worse because you're telling your brain and your body to focus on it. And it's no different than our life circumstances. And our life circumstances are hard. We are all going through hard stuff. When we focus solely on our circumstances and not on the outside, um, sometimes the, we can get jaded and we get to a place where um, the only thing, <laughs> the only thing that matters is our panic for our own circumstances. And we've experienced that a little recently, um, in another encounter and we all handle things differently. We all handle our stresses differently. Nobody can ever understand, regardless, even if you've been through the same circumstances, we can't say that we 100% know what it's like for somebody because we all are different and we all process these circumstances differently. So it's hard to judge and it's hard to make assumptions and it's hard to do things, especially when we're stuck in these places. But I want to encourage you because today's topic, I think kind of blends with this aspect of things and you know we get so caught up on the circumstances that we don't give ourselves the chance to trust God for the outcome and I can say that's true for myself in years past um, and we we don't give um, God a chance to shine because we try to be so proactive and that is definitely something I learned through this process is that when things don't go the way we want to, you know, it's our only vehicle, we're on a wing and a prayer, we're in a financial quandary, and the truck starts giving us issues. There's purpose in it. Somehow or another, there's purpose in that. When you're, when you're driving on the road and you hit a detour, there's purpose in that. You've heard me talk about this before because when we get derailed from things, it could be to bring us into a blessing. It could bring us into gifting someone else. It could keep us safe. God has purpose in everything and he is divinely present all the time and he is divinely active all the time. 
And like I said last week, our topic last week is his plans are always greater than ours. So I want to encourage you that when you're walking through this stuff, we've experienced the hard a lot, but our, our faith is strong and we trust, we trust the outcome. It doesn't mean that we didn't get tired. You guys have seen us tire. We are tired now. I'm, I'm on an adrenaline high right now. Um, we have till four o'clock tomorrow to have this place sparkling. I don't, I don't see that to be a problem. I'm on an adrenaline high. I'm moving from one room to the other. I am moving at a clip, I guess like light speed at this point. He's doing the same thing out there and please pray for him because like I said, I can't slow him down. He's got extra hands um, and I've salted him up and got him lots of water so that he's staying hydrated and his electrolytes are staying up there. But we, we do need to be careful. We need to take care of ourselves through these journeys so that we're not killing ourselves because that is foolish to kill ourselves for the materialistic things in life. If this house were to go, we'd still survive. God would have plans for us otherwise and direct us accordingly. And, you know, I have great faith and trust in that. And, but when we're in these circumstances, we tend to get jaded and we tend to focus on our circumstances. And this could be si simple things. Um, not having enough money to pay a bill. And, and a little funny story. We're, we're in that situation right now ourselves. And I'm waiting on client checks. And right before I came live, you know, this morning the bill notice came across that if I didn't pay it, there was a chance of disconnection. All right, well, I don't have it. I can't, I can't manifest it, but I can pray about it. And right before I came live, one of my clients messaged that they would prefer to pay with a credit card, which I will have in my account tomorrow. So God does work when we enable him to. We have to enable him to. And, Oh, very awesome. I'm sorry, I'm staring at the screen. Shelly says, dill pickle juice is real good to help with um, your electrolytes. Yes. And um, there are also electrolyte concoctions you can make to keep yourself. Um, I don't like the stuff on the market, so we don't use any of that stuff. And we've had really bad experiences with um, Gatorade as well, because that can actually worsen certain situations. So, you know, when you make your own, and there is a perfect example of one that um, is very useful. Looking out for yourselves, knowing what to use too is really important. Um, little, I'm jumping around a little bit today, and I'm probably going to do that because I'm, I'm disheveled, I will admit that. There is a lot to do today. But when before we went to the ER, I put lavender, peppermint, and lemongrass essential oils on the mountain man's chest and on the back of his neck. Lavender is calming. Those three combined um, have helped me and what I use when um, I am going through anaphylaxis um, situations. Um, so I gave him that. I gave him baby aspirin because of the fear of a heart attack and I gave him um, some uh, antihistamines as well. And the doctor reprimanded me for doing that. And, off, and that's an often thing. Um, I've also had doctors laugh at me uh, for using natural medicines that have helped me. But because they go by the textbook and are pretty narrow-minded, they don't often think of or direct you to natural medicines. But when we're out here alone and we need to do those things, you know, those are things that could potentially keep his airways open and help him through this situation and to calm him in that situation when he's going through a um, stressful situation, they're not going to harm him. And I know this. So knowing, knowing how to handle situations, knowing how to um, improve your electrolytes, knowing how to improve your health with really good smoothies, these are things that are things we can do to be proactive in our health and our situation and also help ourselves when we are going through these circumstances. Eating healthy and um, 
you know, because when you're in a stressful situation, your guts are affected. Everything is affected. Stress is really, really harsh. So when we can avoid stress or improve our stressful situations, that's really, really important. So that's another great aspect, and I'm really glad you shared that, Shelly, because when you're going through these situations like this, if you're not taking care of yourself and you're letting yourself decline, you're only compounding what's, what's coming. So keep that in mind. We are, we are very cautious. Up until the last three weeks, we get really good sleep. We take care of ourselves, we exercise, we take moments throughout our day to pause, and we hadn't done that for the last three weeks. We've been pushing so hard. So hindsight 2020, we all do that. We all get in these things. And, you know, we all get in those situations where we feel like we need to panic to get through them. And like many of you have been encouraging me, we've gotten the house to a really great place where it looks really good. It's really cozy. It's what has been in the mountain man's head for nine years. The property looks nice, it's appealing, and for somebody looking to live an off-grid lifestyle and to be able to homestead, have animals, all they have to do is move in. Everything's ready for them. You know, so we need to also understand that you can only do so much sometimes. And I just want to encourage that. And I want to, I want to jump to our prayer list today because we have a lot of people in need of prayer. And we are all going through circumstances. So I want to lift some specific people in prayer. If you need prayer, please list them in the comments. Please don't be afraid to request prayer. And, and you don't have to give details. All you need to let us know is that you need prayer. And everybody that is present today are my strong prayer warriors. We have got an amazing community here. I'd like you to pray for Chad. Chad could use some heavy prayer today. Um... And everybody that I'm requesting prayer for could use prayer for perseverance, strength, healing, and, and just an overwhelming amount of peace to overcome them. And I'd like to pray for Shelly and Mike and Courtney, for Tammy and her family. I'd like to ask for prayer for Pat. Um, we've talked about Pat before. He is dealing with cancer, but he's also dealing with heart issues as a result of chemo radiation and he gets anemic and has been losing blood on a regular basis and he just got uh, two pints of blood so just keep him in your prayers he is also a vet and my hats off to all of you vets out there um, we wouldn't have the freedoms today that we have if it weren't for you and we hold you all with high regard Diana says, I have a very personal unspoken request and also a prayer to find employment for both of us. Absolutely. You got it, sister. And I know that everybody in there, in here will be praying for you as well. <clears throat> Thank you for asking. Also, uh, just keep us in your prayers that we are able to get this listed tomorrow and good photos taken and that the right person finds it very quickly. And Charles mentioned something in, <clears throat> in his uh, comments earlier. <clears throat> Charles has done a really neat thing. Charles had a home that he was hoping to gift to a foundation um, for battered women. And for whatever reason, it didn't fit their needs. And... We have been helping some local friends here who had gone through some experiences with losing everything with a fire. And we met with the friends yesterday and had gifted them some other things previously and are just trying to encourage and help them. And later in the day, Charles messaged and asked me to keep praying that he finds the right person. Now, I didn't think of those people previously because they mentioned their desire to stay in Idaho and yesterday they mentioned that they were looking to go back south but they are in a position where they had very minimal renters insurance they really don't have a lot to get themselves started um, they could go rent somewhere but Everything is just so disheveled. They're in their own circumstances right now and just really um, 
praying for God's guidance and for God's direction and really pulling into God, which has been really awesome. And they've got a beautiful family. They have three children with one on the way. And in eight days, they won't have a home. Um, they were gifted a temporary housing till the end of the school year. And uh, she's a teacher, so they, they're really seeking God's guidance. So yesterday when Charles messaged me, it clicked. And I thought of them. And I mentioned it to Charles. And Charles graciously offered this home to these people people. So I mentioned it to them and it was really awesome because as tearful as I was last week expressing to you the gift that was offered to us, um, I know what it feels like. And it was pretty awesome to kind of be the centerpiece for that miracle to transpire. Um, Charles, as long as I've known him, has been asking for prayer for that property. And uh, it's pretty awesome how God works through us, in us, around us. And, and to, to be able to witness this stuff and to be able to be a part of it so firsthand is just so amazing to see what God is doing. And that is why I keep saying to you all, regardless what your circumstances are, to always trust when you remove that level of fear from your life and you can just fully trust, because in essence, these folks and ourselves are in the same boat. And although, you know, we could have said, I could have said to Charles, well, we are in need. But the thing is, we're seeking God's guidance and we strongly feel that God wants us here in Idaho. God brought us to this place. I'm going to share pictures later in the description. I shared these with Shelly and with Tammy and Chad and, and uh, Kelly earlier this week. But you know how God shares hearts with me? Well, there are three very unique hearts on our property that I didn't see till about three years ago when I, when I became ill. And I truly believe that that's a sign for me that we were meant to be here. Through this move here, to this property, God has manifested Trayer Wilderness. Like I told you guys before, we were not meant, we, we, did, we did not create a website for any other intention other than to keep our family and friends aware that we're still alive and to help them go through the journey with us from afar. And then people found it and people saw it and people were watching our YouTube channel and reading my blog that was really jaded in the beginning because we were working and I couldn't keep up with it real well. But it was enough and there were people interested in this lifestyle. And we've ended up reaching over 13,000 people on our Facebook page and the same on our website and 5,000 on YouTube. You know, it's amazing to see what God has done bringing us to this property. And people back home ask, you know, why aren't you going to come back to Pennsylvania? There is nothing there drawing me back. God brought us here within a reason. And no matter what our circumstances have been, no matter what he has walked us through, mind you, he has walked us through it. We are through it and we are going through it and we will continue. There'll be more things and I know that. But he brings you through them. And he used my illness and me as a vessel to save lives. He gave me the voice that I didn't ever feel I would use to be able to encourage and inspire and reach people. There is so much purpose in everything we walk out every day. It's amazing. It's truly amazing. So when you see those hearts later in the comments below, you'll chuckle because they're, especially the one, the other two aren't as easy to see to other people. I see them. I see them a lot. But you will see, you will see them pop out at you. God has purpose in everything, and he brings us together with a purpose. And, and although Charles kept asking for prayer and for the right person for that property, we didn't feel it was us because we feel God really tugging us here in Idaho and holding us fast in Idaho. And even though it may not be on this parcel, 
And whatever his plans are moving ahead, I know they're going to be grand. And I know that we will keep doing what we are doing and that he brought out things in us that we didn't know we had. Abilities, qualities, in enabling us to reach other people. Good morning, Diane. So it's pretty amazing to see how God uses us through our circumstances. And many a time when we're going through those circumstances, we're fearful of being a failure. And this is where these two things mold together. We are fearful of stepping out. We are fearful of making mistakes. We are fearful of trusting. We feel we have to hang on to everything and do everything ourselves instead of giving God the chance to shine and show you these beautiful miracles. How awesome is that? That Charles was willing to give such a beautiful thing and he's seeking the right person. And he's seeking and seeking. He's seeking in his area. He's checking with churches. He's checking with all kinds of different organizations. And there's nobody that needs this place. And then all of a sudden, this connection is made. And it's just amazing. It's really, really amazing. And I know through the circumstances of these folks that this will be probably one of the the grandest blessings they've ever received. And I think that it will mutate and manifest into some really awesome things where they're headed. Because they've got great desires and great plans, but they couldn't make them happen here no matter how hard they tried. So I truly believe that their faith is going to carry them to this new location and they are going to thrive. And what's really cool is that Charles had moved away from this place and moved to a different location and has been having troubles locating groups of people that he can relate to and hang out with. And what really um, made me really happy, made my heart happy yesterday, was to know these people and know that they would be fulfilling the other prayer that I was praying for Charles. So it's just really awesome. It's really, really awesome to see how God works in our circumstances. To see how when things are as grim as they could possibly be, that roots can start growing and flowers can start forming and blossoming and people are blessed. And when we pay attention outside of our circumstances, we choose to serve people through our circumstances. These things happen. These things happen and that's what makes it so awesome. That no matter how awful the things are that you're walking through, there will be blessings coming your way. There will be ways for you to bless others. So don't get stuck in the fear factor and being fearful in your circumstances. Give God a chance to shine. Give God a chance to prove to you that he will be there. He is there and he will answer your prayers. I can't tell you enough how many miracles we've walked through here. And just how truly blessed we are. Even though you've seen us going through hard times, I'm so thankful that God nudged me to be transparent in our circumstances. Like I've said to you many times, I wish I would have been more transparent when I was walking through my illness, the beginnings of my illness and through my surgery and things. And maybe that's where we were a little reserved in that and maybe not willing to let God direct us. So I'm really grateful that I took the nudge to be transparent with this walk that we are currently in. To show you guys not only what's happening in my life, but what's happening around us, in our community, through our people. You know, we need to be a light and we need to be willing to shine through anything we are work walking through because not only Will you be blessed, but you have the potential to bless others and be that light to others in the dark when they're in this place of fear and, and, and fear of failure. We all fear that. You know, um, there have been times in my life, in the very beginnings of my life, 
that I was fearful of failure. That has passed me by a long time ago. Whether it was the circumstances I walked through that created my boldness and, and my willingness to just do things. Because when we walk through things and we do make mistakes, if we continue on that journey, you're going to learn from that mistake. If you stay stuck in your current circumstances and you are not willing to keep going and you're not willing to see your failures as stepping stones, you'll never progress in life. I couldn't imagine <laughs> where we would be if the mountain man and I were not geared the same way and geared in that we just keep pushing forward. There was a time when we were in the tent and we didn't have enough money to buy the tin to continue on our, on our progress because we had to purchase a truck. Our truck on the way here died and we had to purchase a truck. It took money away from our building funds. We were literally on our hands and knees and God blessed us with that to continue going. But even had he not, we wouldn't still be in that tent, I guarantee you. Not that the tent was not the best time of my life. That was the absolute best time of my life. But we needed to get under roof for winter. We, we make things happen. And I want to encourage you guys to, to, you know how I told you last week and the week before to pick two words that you were going to remove from your vocabulary and your thought process? Fear of failure is one that you need to remove. Because there is, in my mind, there is no such thing as failure. It is a hiccup in your path that enables you to learn to move you forward. And, and if you're smart and if you are paying attention to what's going on in your circumstances and not so caught up in your circumstances, you will realize those mistakes and, and you'll learn from them. But the thing is, you've got to be... You, you've got to be in that place of an open mind to be willing to do that. There's been a lot of comments. I'm going to jump back here. Tammy says, thank you, Charles, for showing the love of Christ. That's what I said to him, too, Tammy. Is that not amazing? That's just so amazing. And it was so funny to see the details throughout the day and the way God just totally turned events throughout the day that progressed and pro produced such an amazing, amazing act of love. So awesome. Charles says community action and Christian crossing will help them get clothes, furniture, kitchen supplies, and Pastor Chris and Mark will help them. It's so awesome. Charles, thank you for having their back. Thank you for your, your gift of love. Um, and, and just looking out for them there. Um, it's just so awesome. It's so awesome. This place is so perfect for them. And um, as I had mentioned last week, he had lost all his tools. Charles has left some of his tools behind and some of the furniture. You know, these people don't have anything other than what they've just been gifted. And it isn't a lot. It isn't a lot. So it's pretty awesome. And, it's, and I know that they needed that gift of love to be given to them to uh, progress them. Uh, and to just, I mean, this is all nurturing. This is all nurturing for us all. To see this, to be a part of it. Um, I know that it's giving Charles great joy to be able to do this. And I know that they are receiving it with tearful joy. So it's really, really amazing. And, and that's what we as a body of Christ need to do, is we need to look out for each other. We need to help each other. And we need to be there for each other. And sometimes that means that we can only be there in certain ways for people. But whatever ways we can, we need to. And we on the receiving end need to be willing to accept whatever people, however people are able to help and be gracious with that and take it and run with it. And, and then in that circumstance, share your testimony, share what God has done, share that celebration with other people because there are so many people that 
don't understand Christianity, that have seen bad aspects of Christianity because of the hypocrisy in our churches and the church is not doing what they're supposed to be doing and so many aspects of it. We all fail, we all make mistakes, but we need to make them right where we can and we need to allow our testimonies to shine and help others and to, to, to be that light and to not only go and sit in that pew on Sunday, but walk it out. Walk it out. Walk it out in your day to day. Don't just sit there and be a temporary Sunday Christian. Talk it, walk it, act it, show it, gift it. We've got to do that. We've got to make it a point. And you know what? We are going to slip up. And that's what the beauty is of new beginnings. New beginnings gives us the chance every day to make to right the wrongs and and to step out a little further than we did the day before and to be a little bolder the new day than we were before we've got chances and we've got to inspire and encourage one another to be that light i look at society i deal with people i see the hurting people i see the stuck people i see the afraid people I see people that have beautiful abilities, but they're in a circumstance and they don't know how to get out of it. We need to be that light. We need to be the encouragement to the world. The world is a sad place right now. And we can choose to sit and be sad with it, or we can choose to make a difference. And regardless where God takes us from here, this is not the end. Trier Wilderness is the people. This was the, the place God gifted us with to start it. Trier Wilderness is going to travel wherever God takes us. And we are going to continue to be a light wherever we are. And that's what we have to be. We have to be a light. And we have to work through our circumstances. And you know, sometimes being transparent in our circumstances helps people to realize they're not alone. A couple weeks ago, that, that happened in the live when, when I mentioned that, I wasn't, that I'm not perfect either. Um, and I mentioned I used to have a sailor's mouth. I did. I grew up in a rough spot. I grew up having to be rough and tough and to hold my own and to defend myself on a regular basis from third grade on. I was, I was tough. God softened me. That doesn't mean that I'm still not the physical person and, and have the abilities that I had that I, that I was forced to, to, to create. But that means that God softened me in a way to use those things and to maybe curb those things and to continue to strive to be more like Christ. I'm proud of that. I'm not proud that I cursed like a sailor, but I am proud that God brought me through that and God is working on my heart and he can do the same for you wherever you are whatever circumstances you are in whatever circumstances you've been through however rough and gruff you've been and things you've done God forgives all of that God forgives all of that he nurtures all of that and the blessings that you see being gifted today both given and received are things that will happen to you too as you pull in and start trusting him in your life instead of trying to trust yourself okay wow God is I had no idea what I was gonna do today I knew what I wanted to say but there was such a jumbled mess in my head and it's amazing how God works it's amazing I want to read some things to you we've talked about Martin and Kim I would like you to also pray for them Martin needs prayers to come out of his coma and be healthy he had a heart attack jogging with his daughter almost 90 days ago. His family of seven children and his wife are very faithful and trusting God for the miracle and I know they will get it. I am just getting to know Kim. I have friended her on Facebook thanks to Diana, which I am grateful for. She is such an inspiration and just her transparency and her faith in God is amazing. Absolutely amazing. And I want to just share, I've shared some of her testimonies with you guys and it's just really awesome. And, and these are the, what I'm talking about, the importance of sharing. She says, 84 days, 12 weeks, too long.
That's how long we've been living in the land of the unknown, visiting Martin in the hospital, believing we will see God's miraculous healing, having hard discussions about the potential, very hard what ifs. No parents should have to have discussions about these things. God has been incredibly gracious and loving and giving me the words when my heart and brain had none. Giving my children the strength of faith to trust Him fully with the outcome. And even accept the possibility of the worst case scenario, which leads to the hard discussions. I could easily wallow and wilt in the hurt and heartache, but I choose to focus on His immense goodness and His loving kindnesses all along this continuing journey. I may never understand why God saw fit to allow us to, tr to traverse this path. I will, however, always know that it will fulfill the purpose it is meant to fulfill. He never wastes our experiences, tears, pains, trials, or struggles. They all work together for our good if we can just leave it in, in His hands. So true, guys. And this is, this is so awesome. This is the stuff that fills me. Your stories fill me. Communicating with you guys fills me. Being a community fills me. And seeing what God is doing with these live videos is just so incredibly intense. I have another one of hers to read and I'm going to try to read this. Lately, I have to admit, I have wondered many times, why are we still here? Why hasn't the healing come? What good is coming from this? Him laying here in a persistent vegetative state. How does this bring glory to God? In my mind, all people see, if a family believing that God can heal, even though everything medicine says is that it can't happen and it hasn't, poor crazy lady still hopes in the impossible. So yesterday, a janitorial staff member that met us the first week, I forgot about this one. I save things as I see them for you guys, and I forgot about this one. Okay, so janitorial staff that she met the first week happened to be filling in on on the, their floor she was cleaning Martin's room when she stopped shut the door and said I just need to tell you I know God was cleaning I know now oh wait my eyes are teary and I'm having a problem reading here I know God left you here so I can see what real faith looks like I want to know God like you and your mama do I know him, but I need to trust him more. And I needed to see what real love looks like. Because you really do love your man, don't you? So awesome. I hugged her neck and I told her that God just used her to show me there was good coming from our journey, even if I don't always see it. We both were in tears and grateful God cared enough for us both to use us in each other's lives. I've struggled with feeling defeated and inadequate and just overwhelmed the last week or so. I needed a reminder that this journey is impacting lives for the kingdom. So guys, it's funny, I might have cursed like a sailor, but I wear my heart on my sleeve. <laughs> this is awesome stuff. This is awesome, awesome stuff to see how God is working. I need to get a tissue, excuse me. Share some of your testimonies, guys. Share. Share with me. I know you guys have good things happening. I know you guys are touching people too in your lives with the things you are experiencing, the things you are doing, the things you are saying. Charles, you are impacting the kingdom. All of you are. <laughs> so funny. I can't keep it together when I read stuff like that because it just instantly gets me. But it's awesome to see how God is working. And you have seen how God is working in our lives. We all go through those hard, hard moments where the enemy seeps in and he starts trying to make us feel inadequate, trying to make us question, trying to make us fearful, trying to make us doubt his love, doubt his promises, doubt his miracles. But the more you trust... And I pray that you guys have seen that through us. The more you trust, the more he's there for you, the more he communicates with you, the more the doors open with him. And 
it's just such an awesome walk. I wouldn't trade it for anything. And I realize now in my younger days, you know, what I was missing, what I was craving, what I was needing. And now I have that. And now I need to share that. It's just amazing stuff. I want to share this too with you. When things slow down, I look very forward to sharing a lot more homesteading skills and off-grid living skills with you guys. There's so much I want to do and so much I aspire to do and so much that I aspire to share with you guys. So I appreciate you guys being on this journey with us because things shifted from teaching homesteading and off-grid skills to being an encouragement and an inspiration and sharing our walk and sharing what God is doing. And I know through this process that God is just going to do such amazing, amazing things through this whole journey, through this community. And I know so many of you are already a light in your communities. You are being blessings to others. You are walking it out. And it's helpful for people to see that because they too will want what you have. So just remember you're being a light and keep doing what you're doing. And if, if anybody out there does not have a relationship with Jesus and you would like one, please reach out to me. I would be happy to share the gospel with you. What I have is available to you. It was gifted to us all. We just need to be willing to accept it. And it's just as simple as asking him into our hearts and to ask him to forgive whatever we may have done throughout our lives and to just accept us. And you know what? He does. He loves each and every one of us, regardless what we've been through, what we're doing, and he will help you through it. Guys, you've seen what we've traversed. You've seen what we've been walking through, and I know you've seen God's hand, and it's just amazing. It is amazing to see. I couldn't imagine my life without a minute. I told you that, guys that before. Now, I want to share some more with you. I know these are long, but I want to share something else with you. I see so many people in my walk and in my world that are, you know, that I'm in contact with often. A lot of people, you know, people reach out to me all the time from our community, from our, our, our uh, Trey Wilderness page and our uh, YouTube channels and people that are dealing um, with breast implant illness as I did. You know, uh, I, I leave a door open and I want that door open for people to be willing and, and unafraid to reach out and know that they're going to get a response from me and that they have an open door for communication. And so many people are so afraid and they're stuck in these places, these lonely, lonely, sad places. And I want to encourage you guys to please don't be afraid of failure. I was talking to somebody the other day and, and I encouraged them in, in, a, in their very low place to just take one step daily, do one thing to make themselves feel better, to give themselves joy, to do something that they enjoy, that gives them happiness, to just each day do one thing to bring yourself happiness. And I, the comment I got was that um, they don't know that they can do this. And I said, why? My mind doesn't work like that. I have progressed from places like that, but now my mind does not work that way. I, I kind of feel like the bull in the china shop. I, I grab the bull by the horns and I just embrace life and I just keep going. And I don't have fears of anything anymore. And I told you guys before, that's a result of my illness and it's a progressive thing to get to this place. I know what it's like to be fearful. I've been there and it's, it's a hard place because it just keeps seeping in and it just keeps eating at you. And I want you guys to be where I am. I want you guys to continue on the path I'm on and to follow me into this place of trust with no fear and no such thing as failure. Good grief. I make mistakes all the time. I make mistakes all the time, but I'm not afraid of them. Um, I've, Zig Ziglar was one of my early on mentors and uh, Tony Robbins, 
You know, their words really stuck fast to me when I was younger in, in that failure is only failure if it's in your eyes and you see it as failure. Step, using them as stepping stones progresses us to such great places. So in continuing in the conversation, I, I said, I ask why. And she said that she, she was scared. And I said, of what? And she said, failure. Now, I wanna, I wanna present something to you guys. When you're in a place that's low and scary and your circumstances are scary and you don't know how to get out of them, but you so badly want to get out of them, I want you to make a list of pros and cons. Staying in this state that's scary or being more afraid of taking that step to make a change. I talked about this the other week. The most important step we can take is the first step to change. You gotta take that first step. And there is no such thing as failure when every day you're doing something new to improve where you're at. There is no failure. That's progression. That's progression. So if you get rid of the word failure and fear and you remove those words from the enemy and you just keep on that road of stepping stones, you are going to fail. You are going to make mistakes. The next day is a new beginning, okay? Keep progressing. Keep progressing every day doing something to improve your current situation. And eventually, you will be in a new place. I've been there, guys. I've been there multiple times in my life where that is what I had to do to get out of where I was. So I'm not shortchanging or downplaying where you are. I am encouraging you to do what I did. I am encouraging you to embrace your life and want something more. And wanting something more means not thinking about failure or fear, but striving for what you want and tasting it, tasting it. There's been some comments, let me see here. Shelly says, my daughter had some animals that wanted us to take care of while she was dealing or not dealing with her situation. We have her two cats, but her dog was more than I could deal with. We asked our neighbors to take her in as they had another dog. This has been almost six months, and my daughter finally is starting to realize that her dog is no longer hers. She is starting to think of others and not only how it will affect her. The dog is in a really good place. It is all our praying for her and this proof as of two months ago that she was still wanting to have her dog back even if not good for the dog. Awesome. Well, Shelly, we will keep praying. We will keep praying. And, you know, there is so much power in prayer and, and communication with God. You know, sometimes, sometimes we're in these circumstances and we don't know how to get out of them and we don't know how to progress and we don't know how to take that first step. And sometimes that first step is just giving it all to God. Let God do what he needs to do. There's, there's so much, there's so much we can do for ourselves and others through prayer. And I just want to encourage you guys to take that first step. If you know people out there that are struggling to take that first step, praying for them is the biggest thing we can do for them and encouraging them, and then just keep praying and watch what God does. And you know, I'm, I'm seeing God's handiwork in so many lives through the result of our prayers. And I know that we all have different personalities and that we all, you know, that you, you guys aren't all like me. But what, 
What works for one may not work for the other, but through effort, you'll find that out. And maybe through the effort you take to take those first steps, you'll figure out what works for you. But you need to take that first step. And dear Jesus, may I be a light to these people that are in these stuck places because there's so many that reach out to me on a daily basis. I want to see them shine. I want to see them progress. And sometimes we find such safe harbors in our circumstances, even though they're grim places, because on the other side of it, it's, it's harder to imagine a better place. Or we, we stay stuck in that place because it's comfortable, but we desire so much to be somewhere else. You gotta make your desires more desirable than the place you're in, and you gotta want it bad enough. And I just want to encourage those out there that are struggling to keep praying for those in need around you because there is so much power in that. And sometimes we have to pray for people that are hard to be around or that we aren't even around. I pray for my family every day. Despite walking away from them and it being the best choice I've ever made, I still pray for them every day. Every day. Because through our prayers, great changes can happen. And through our steps, that one single step, and then just keep taking that one single step daily, we can end up in places that we can be such a huge light to others. We will have empathy, we will have a bright light shining through us. And you know, sometimes we look for other people to bring us joy and to pull us out of these places that we're in. And we can't do that. We can't do that because it's not other people's responsibility to bring us joy. It's our responsibility to desire that joy, to find that joy, and to lasso that joy. So we can't sit and wait for other people to be our joy and our happiness. We need to be able to find that in ourselves. And through um, our activities, because see, even, even a husband and wife, I don't look for the mountain man to bring me happiness and joy and I don't have expectations of him. I seek happiness and joy for myself and I know that he gifts it to me all the time. But I don't look for it. I don't look to him for it because then it's real easy for us to say, well, he let me down and he didn't give me happiness and joy and now I'm in this place. That's not fair. That's not fair because he may be seeking my happiness and joy at that time and that's why he's not sharing it with me. We can't do that. We need to be willing to seek it ourselves and to not put blame where blame doesn't belong. Um, expect, expectations alone are a really evil thing. Um, we can expect of ourselves to seek joy in the day and, and be disappointed in ourselves and use that as a stepping stone to keep seeking better. But to, to turn that on somebody else is a, is a real negative thing to do. So if you're in that place and you're expecting someone else to give you great joy and happiness and to make your day the best it can be, you're already looking out of false lenses. You need to want this yourself and you need to desire this yourself and you need to have the courage, the strength, and the will to make efforts one step at a time daily to change your circumstances. We've got some good comments flowing here. I know this, so I'm gonna look. Charles says, I am so thankful for God answering prayer. Me too, Charles, it's pretty awesome. Double prayer, double prayer answered right there. All right, Shelly says, I have given this situation to God and everyone wonders how I deal with it. I tell them I have no control over it and that is that it's in God's hands. And you know what? That is the best way to deal with it. It's so easy when we give things to God to want to take it back. We can lead people to water. 
but we can't make them drink, no different than a horse. And we can run ourselves ragged trying to help others, and in the process, we empty our own cup, and we stress ourselves and strain ourselves. But that's exactly, circles back to what I just said. We personally need to have the strength, perseverance, and the desire and will to do it ourselves. And if we don't, we can't, we can't fault other people for not producing that for us. And the same is true when we are trying to help other people. We can get them to the point where they need to embrace it themselves. It is up to them at that point to do that. Through our prayers and giving things to God, and wholeheartedly giving things to God because we're really good at pulling them back, right guys? I've been there, I've been there. I give things to God now and I get such great peace and I walk away and I watch what he does. And I see the light of what he does every day. So when you can do like Shelly did, and it was a process, right Shelly? Giving things to God is not an easy task. It's a progressive nature of things. It's a progressive learning process to give it to God and leave God have it. And you know what? You're seeing the fruit of giving it to God and the fruit of all of our prayers. Shelly, this is awesome testimony. Her daughter is Sarah that we've been praying for. And I want you guys to keep praying for her. God is shining. God is working. God is enabling her to have the strength and the will to see things for herself through the shaded, jaded glasses she's been wearing. God's working. And you know what? Sometimes God works those miracles like this. Sometimes they're a long progression. And those are hard. Those long progressions are hard. But we need to be willing to let God work. And when they're long progressions, that's where we try to grab the reins back because we think we could do better or that we need to do something. Just need to let them work. We need to let them work and we need to pray. God will make efforts. God will bring his, his miracles and his pathway and what he's doing to light. Sometimes he won't though. Sometimes it'll just happen. But we need to be patient and we need to be willing to trust him. All right, here's some more good stuff. Let me see. And Shelly, you're being a light to others because they're seeing you having the trust and strength just like Kim does with what's going on with Martin. You're expressing and, and showing the same thing. And I know your road was rocky, but you've shown that progression to people and they've seen that progression and they are seeing God working. This is, this is awesome stuff. And that's walking it out and talking it out and sharing it. Diana says, sometimes what we see as a safe harbor is really more of a prison. Been there, done that, still have to guard against that. Yeah, we all do. We all do. It's a simple, it's being behind bars sometimes, even as simple as the words I told you to get rid of. We revert back to what we think is comfortable. It's just like the retraining of my brain. My brain wants to go back to what was comfortable what it was used to instead of me writing with my left hand and doing all this crazy new stuff. It wants to go back to what it was accustomed to. But what it was accustomed to was toxic and poisonous and was killing me. So the same is true, just like Diana said. In our own little prisons, we're killing ourselves. We're sitting sometimes in corners and allowing ourselves to just not exist, not do things for ourselves not see the light of day, being stuck in great depressions. And depression is hard, trust me, I know, I've been there too. I've, I, I've walked that out. It's hard to be in those places, but we have to be strong enough and pull into what we know will help us. Alcohol, drugs, those things are not help, but <laughs> the mountain man has spoken. <laughs> God is the answer. Christian people are the answer. And sadly, sometimes we can't find them in the church. The church is failing to be there for people that are truly in need. They aren't reaching out. They aren't helping. They aren't loving. So you need to, when you find that, hold it tight. What we have right here in this community is big. It's big. You guys are amazing how you love on one another. Charles shared his great blessing, and, and we've talked about that today. Cool. That was uh, 
<laughs> Sorry, I got a mouthful of sunflower seeds. <laughs> um, that was really awesome, Charles. That was, that was, and that's, uh, you know, not everybody can give something as big as that, but even little things, that's what we're supposed to do. And that, that was uh, truly, truly <laughs> a gift. That, that was incredible. The work of God. May God bless you for it. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to go eat, eat some more. Everybody take care. I love you. <laughs> Be careful. Yeah. Are you drinking? No. You just... <laughs> ah. All right, let's see here. Shelly has said, I have always told my kids that a relationship is never 50-50. Amen. You know, you hear so many people say that, and that's such a falsehood. That is the end of a relationship. It takes 100% from both uh, for any relationship to work. Amen. If you are not giving 100% of yourself, you're slighting somebody. We need, that's, you know, so true. And in the beginning of my life, I, that's all I heard was people saying it's a 50-50. And, and I, get, I guess that they're saying that if you each, you know, are putting in to meet in the middle, Okay, maybe, but that's not how people mean it. And, and I totally agree with that, Shelly. That is, has been a bone of contention for me for a long time in that we have to give all of ourselves. And just like, like Glenn said, you know what? Not everybody can give a gift like Charles, but we can give a gift that can produce the same effects by just loving on people that are hurting and praying for those people. Despite how much they've hurt us, despite how much havoc and pain they might create in our lives while we're trying to help them, because a lot of times these situations are people that are near and dear to us. In other situations where they're in the church and you can see the church missing the boat, you can see the church not checking in on these people, loving on them and being there to help them physically if they need help. You know, those simple gifts that we can give however we can give, are important and they do it's it's like a ripple effect when I when a raindrop hits in a pond it ripples and it spreads and that's what we have the ability to do with prayer with loving on each other with loving on ourselves and being willing to each day just make one small effort even if that if, if you're dealing with depression and you're not getting out of bed, to get out of bed and shower and feel good about yourself, get some sunlight, read a book. You know, there's so many things we can do, but we've got to take that first step. And that first step is always going to be the hardest. But right here today, I am cheering you guys on to take the first step in whatever it is you're dealing with to move past fear, failure, inadequacy, looking for someone else to give you joy and pleasure and happiness, you can't do that. You gotta seek that stuff from God. And you gotta seek that stuff from within yourself through God. Good morning, Daniel. All right, Shelly says, yes, a process, but the peace afterwards is so worth it. Isn't it though? You know, learning to give things to God is truly probably one of the hardest things because it, it involves that walk of faith and trust. And as your faith and trust builds, giving things to God becomes so much easier. And at the same time, so does your faith and trust get to such a level that you end up being like myself, that you don't have fear, that you don't worry, that you just trust wholeheartedly. And it's a crazy thing. I can't tell you how often I think about it in my days when I'm walking through things. And I'll give you a perfect example. Taking him to the emergency room on, on Saturday was like me dealing with my illness where I felt like I was numb. I just didn't have emotion. I love my man with all my heart. I love him with all of my being, but I wasn't afraid because I trusted God with the circumstances and I trusted God with the outcome. But when you're walking through those things and you are, and I, I go through that and I feel that and I, I think to myself, this is just so weird. It's like an out of body experience, you know? It's like a, I don't even know how to explain it. It's just weird. It's weird, but it's, an, it's, weird, but it's beyond awesome. 
to trust God so much that you just, you know he's going to be okay. You know that God's got this. I know that this is going to get done. I'm not killing myself. I'm not worried. Ha. <laughs> Oof. So I just want to encourage you guys. Did anyone else lose the feed? Oh, uh-oh. Am I still here? I hope so. I know when you watch the replay, everything's there. If it pauses, it pauses, and then it picks back up and records. So it's not pausing on my end, so I hope you guys can um, still see me talking. Um, I'm going to end things. I'm going to read something real quick here, I think. And then I'm going to say our prayer. I just wanted to see what I had saved here. Okay, this, these are good. I'm going to real quick read these, and then I'm going to pray and, and get you guys back to your day. I know these are long, but this is really awesome stuff. All right. I recommend that believers underline Isaiah 41 in their Bible and meditate on it frequently. When one of God's people is seeking an anchor in turbulent times, this is the right passage for the job. Here, Isaiah writes about the source of Christian strength. In Isaiah 41.10 alone, the Lord promises strength, help, protection, and protection. Moreover, he gives two commands. Do not fear and do not anxiously look about you. Among Satan's subtle and successful traps is the art of distraction. He's there all the time, in our heads, giving us those two words we want to get rid of. The evil one knows that fear can choke faith. He works hard to make unsettling circumstances a person's sole focus. We've got to get our heads out of our circumstances. We've got to. Once a believer's attention is diverted from God, natural human tendencies take over. And we just manifest and keep rotating and keep strengthening in that negativity. In the absence of prayer and worship, anxiety and doubt grow unobstructed. Staying focused on the Lord can be hard. The flesh prefers to seek security by thinking through all the possible angles and goes back to that comfortable spot behind bars, right? Like Diana said, our tendency is to weigh what we think could happen against what experts say will happen and then to evaluate possible ways of preventing our worst fears from coming true. Instead of becoming more confident, we begin to realize how powerless we are. Thankfully, we serve an almighty God who says, surely I will help you. We can count on him. By focusing on our circumstances, we are actually choosing to feel anxiety and doubt. So I want to encourage you to focus on Isaiah 41.10. Psalms 91 is also very good. Those are ones that we, we root in. Now I want to read this to you also. So that talks to you about helping get yourself out of your circumstances. We need things that we can go to. Write those down so that you have something when you go through this these circumstances because it's going to keep circling around. We're always going to have something that we're going through regardless what it is, how big it is, how small it is. We're going to have something. So learn how to pull yourself out of your circumstances. We have to do that. When you have that negativity building in your head and you keep resurfacing on negative thoughts, on negative things that occurred, you need to redirect. Give it to God. Give it to God and take it back. Take back what your, your life, you're stuck in that negative rut. Sorry, Diana. Sorry, guys. I hope, I hope you were able to see things. Um, the replay should have things in, but I don't know. The enemy's probably stepping in now at this point. So having tools is important. We don't need to fail. We don't need to have fear of failure. There is no such thing in my book. I don't even, I don't even know what failure looks like anymore. We make mistakes. That's a common knowledge. We're going to make mistakes every day. Every day. Some kind. You know, it might be something really simple as breaking a dish or it could be, you know, who knows. But we need to be willing to use those as stepping stones. And, and not even, that word is removed. That's another word that I removed a long time ago. Fear and failure are gone. Now the other thing we need to do is realize how we can be a light. We've expressed that today in so many ways. But... I was eager to return to St. James Infirmary in Montego Bay, Jamaica, and reconnect with Rendell, who two years earlier had learned about Jesus' love for him. Evie, a teenager in the high school choir I travel with each spring, had, her, had read scripture with Rendell and explained the gospel, and he personally received Jesus as his Savior. Whenever I entered the men's section of the home and looked toward Rendell's bed, or when I entered, 
and I looked toward Rendell's bed. However, I found it was empty. I went to the nurse's station and was told what I didn't want to hear. He had passed away just five days before we arrived. Through tears, I texted Evie the sad news. Her response was simple. Rendell is celebrating with Jesus. Later, she said, it's a good thing we told him about Jesus when we did. Her words reminded me of the importance of being ready to lovingly share with others the hope we have in Christ. No, it's not always easy to proclaim the gospel message about the one who will be with us always. But perhaps, I'm sorry, but when we think about the difference it made for us and for the people like Rendell, perhaps we'll be encouraged to be even more ready to make disciples wherever we go. I'll never forget the sadness of seeing that empty bed and also the joy of knowing what a difference one faithful teen made in Rendell's life forever. Guys, we all have that ability. We all have that ability in our walk. And I'm so proud of Shelly, you know, with what she has been walking through and, and the fact that the comments from people watching you, Shelly, are that you are being a light. Kim is being a light through an extremely dark time. Charles is being a light to a family in a very dark time and is being blessed with, I know, good friendship. They're a really good family. We've all walked through things. Diana, when you were walking through your struggles finding a home, I know you were a light to others too. And I know that God is going to bless you greatly with work and God will take care of all of us. But we need to be willing to take steps daily to improve our situations. We need to remove fear, failure, and those two words I told you. And if you're new to watching today, if there are negative words that go through your head on a regular basis and you're aware of them, you need to choose two of them this week that you're going to remove and make a conscious effort every time they pop in your head to tell them where to go, politely. <laughs> I meant that in a good way. <laughs> so, guys, we have a lot of abilities. We have a lot of powers personally because God has gifted us with those powers, so use them. Those of you that are struggling, I've been there. I've been through a lot of different things. I've surfed a lot of different things. And through those things, I have gained a great power and strength that I am proud of and I can only give God the glory. I am who I am because of God. I am who I am because God has strengthened me and called me out to be a better person, to be a stronger person, to be a light. And because he has called me out, I cannot refuse that. I pick up my cross every day. I've learned not to be fearful of what I say in public or fearful of what I say to people if it's coming from my heart. I don't say evil, nasty things to people. But when I know that they're coming from the heart, and it's just where it all comes from for me, I don't fear what I say. I know God has purpose. And I always pray that God gives me the right words and God gives me the abilities to speak to people that are hurting so that I can be a light to them. So guys, Walk it out. Talk it out. Be a light in your circumstances if you're afraid to do it right now. But as you walk this out and as you become bold, continue to show your boldness and let your boldness shine through. I'm going to say a prayer. You guys have been on here long enough, but I'm really grateful for you guys. I'm really grateful to share this. I'm really grateful how God works through me and how he is working through you guys and how you guys love on each other. It's so awesome. I'm going to pray. Papa, ah. Uh, just the miracles and the awe and the amazingness of what you are doing in our community right here, but what you are doing in your kingdom. I know it is universal. I know it is big. I know it is amazing. And just to see the astounding things you are doing in this small community, it's just amazing. It gives me goosebumps. It gives me joy. It makes me just my heart sing. I just ask that you be there for all that are in need right now. I ask you to keep Mona and Ken wrapped in your arms. I ask you to wrap Charles in your arms. Bless him greatly for being such a blessing to others. I ask that you uh, wrap Heather and Justin and their family in your arms and just uh, be with them through this new journey and just keep them safe and just put your hedge of protection and your bubble of protection around them. And just may they shine. May this be something that truly makes them shine. I ask that you be with Kelly today as she's working. She is dealing with great pain. Just give her comfort and peace. 
be with Shelly as she is struggling too with um, some health issues and, and be with her daughter Sarah. What a light and what an awesome testimony to hear how things are going with Sarah and that our prayers are being answered and just how you are using each and every one of these people to be a light and to be a disciple. All of our circumstances can be used and it's just amazing to see. I just feel like a hub. I'm just the center where I see so much glory and so much beauty being worked. It's just amazing. I ask that you be with Pat Kenny and just bless him and heal him. And I ask that you be with Tammy and her family and with Chad. Lord, I just ask that you lift him up, give him great peace, renew his strength, and give him perseverance for the walk he's on. I know he too is touching lives. And Papa, I just thank you for all these people that join me, for all those that watch the replay. I ask that you just love on them, wrap your arms around them, just give them peace. Give them strength to have the will to step out of wherever they are. And just give them the courage to day by day do one thing to just improve their circumstances. For everybody to remove those negative connotations that enter our heads that, that the enemy just keeps planting and trying. He's going to keep trying and we need to be stronger. We need to use Ephesians 6 every day to put on our armor and we need to hang tight to Isaiah 41 and to Psalms 90. Or yeah, Isaiah 41 and Psalms 91. I didn't notice that before. But thank you for the, your word and your blessings and how you're going to just take care of each of us. And what I thank you most for, Papa, is what you're going to do in everyone's lives. We all need your help, and I know that through trust and faith and perseverance and looking to you, you will answer prayers and work miracles. Thank you for what you're going to do. I love you, and I ask this all in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Okay, guys. Did you, I'm, I'm going to get these guys off of here. So, guys, thank you so much for your time today, for your love, for your prayers. And wait till you see this place next week. It's going to look really amazing. And I just thank you for your encouragement and inspiration for us on this journey. It's going to feel so good to get this house listed tomorrow and just be one step closer to our new chapter. So, guys, have a blessed day. Have a fantastic rest of your week weekend and I look forward to seeing you next week. I love you all. You guys are so precious and doing such amazing things. Keep doing it. I love you. God bless.